What is up expats and travelers alike? I'm Josh with Expats Everywhere. And I'm Kaylee. And we have two team members here that have joined us as well. This is Godwin, also goes by G, and then this yeah. is Amy. <laughs> These two have never been to Portugal before, and it's their first time, right? It's our first full week here together in Fado. So today we're gonna do something really special. We're gonna give you guys our opinions. <laughs> no, we're going to give you one hot take and we're going to give you uh, one first impression per person. So who would like to start? I'll go first. <laughs> Do it. Okay. So first impression, Fado is fairly small. There aren't a lot of expats here. Some tourists, I mean, who knows how COVID related that is, but mm. it is not as buzzing as I thought it would be. That would be my first impression. Um, my hot take is it's difficult with the stroller, the crosswalks. Um, it's not very walkable. The cobblestone, you know, streets and every, or sidewalks aren't very walkable. So that would be for me. Okay. My first impression is the little downtown touristy area is super cute. <laughs> I uh, actually really like it. It's really quaint. Uh, very nice. Um, I'll, I'll wait for my hot take. So <laughs> oh. Amy Godwin. <laughs> I'll go then. Uh, my first impression was um, it was pretty quiet when we first got here, but uh, really hot. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, my hot take would be, I think it's hilly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's hilly. Oh, you yeah. wait till we get to Lisbon. My legs are burning since I got here. When we get to Lisbon, yeah, your caps are going to be on fire. Uh, wow. Yeah. I mean, my first, my first impressions, I feel like people are very nice when it comes to trying to cross the road. Like, <laughs> in the UK, when you have the zebra crossings, in my opinion, it's kind of optional if you want to stop or you don't want to. But every single time I have headed out to cross the road, people have stopped every single one not a single person's drove past me <laughs> sorry i'm going too fast so that is just awesome yeah. <laughs> so my hot take is actually having to do with the sun i think the sun is really really intense so we said in our last video that it gets hot here and what we mean is that yes the temperatures do rise but in general i think in the summers it's around mid 80s and we've been in hotter countries especially saudi arabia <laughs> uh, and kaylee's from florida so we know it gets hot there but the sun is really, really intense. So yeah. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna ask Godman and Amy to help us kind of produce this. So G and Amy, we will get you guys back in in a few. Thank you very much. Uh, we're gonna bring this a little closer so the mic is closer to us. And do our normal live style. So we've already got some questions rolling in. Now we do wanna say that um, the plan for this video is to talk about Fado and the Algarve questions going on, but we want to make this focus on where we are right now because we will be doing lives every two weeks with the locations we're in and the different details about that. So let's try to keep it to as much down in the Algarve as possible. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Josh took the hat off. Oh yeah. Sorry guys. <laughs> Bit of a hat, hat hair. Yeah. So if we take a look up, we've got a lot of people already in here. Um, Wolfgang, oh, let's see, uh, Mia, hey, I'm also near Fado at the moment. I thought it would be nice to speak sometime. I saw you with Carl. I'm also on his show every uh, last Friday of the month. But Mia, uh, yeah, send us an email, uh, info at expatsiverywhere.com, and uh, we'll get in touch. That sounds good. Uh, Wolfgang, hello from Sedona, Arizona. Um, my husband and myself, Victoria, are waiting our D7 visa to live in Portugal. We are looking at August 30th as our landing date. Awesome. awesome. All right, let's jump to some Algarve and Fado stuff. Hi, hi. Hey, everyone. Go ahead. All right, so we have Trav says, okay, based on your review, safe to rule out Fado as a place for retirement. I don't know. I mean, not necessarily. Not necessarily. It depends. It just depends on what you want. I would say that there's just not as many expats here compared to some other places. So mm -hmm. being in Lagos, there's a lot more going on. Um, Tavira also um, caters a bit more to retiree expats. Fado is well, a bit behind in all of that, I would say. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the lady at the tourism office said that a lot of people come in for day trips um, and or they stay maybe one night. Uh, I could see that. I mean, you could definitely do the little downtown in, in just a day. Uh, one cool thing I have to mention that we didn't actually talk about in the video is that they have the like last mile marker for their Route 66. So the equivalent of 
Route 66 in the U.S. is the EN2. And the EN2 runs from the north in Shabish. My Portuguese people, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I was trying to understand all this uh, speaking in Portuguese. But I think it's in Shabish. Yeah. And it finishes down here in Fado. So we actually saw a ton of motorbikes and also there's cyclists and people walk it and it's pretty crazy. Yeah, but there's always someone taking a picture there because it has the, the number. So it's a cool milestone. So that is a cool little feature, but it just has far less tourists. So that's a good thing if you want to retire here and not have a big tourist buzz, um, but it will be quieter, slower pace, and just not as many uh, expats here, honestly. Yeah. It depends. All right, so we have another question that just popped up. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Ron says, in your earlier video, you mentioned some concerns about the friendliness of people. Can you expand on that with some examples? <laughs> Ron, th thanks for, um, for bringing that question up. So one of the issues that we have kind of run into is actually related to, to something that Kaylee experiences, and that's pushing the stroller. <laughs> so usually in Porto, for example, you're pushing the stroller down the sidewalk. Um, the only time you'll have people block you off is if they're like completely oblivious that they're there, like that they're standing in your way. Whereas here we've noticed there are times where it's like you're rolling up on them and they just kind of look at you mm -hmm. like, go on, get around me. And it's like, we have nowhere that we could go unless yeah. we go in the street. So that one's tough. I have noticed too with the stroller, like it's funny that G thinks like that. It's funny that everyone stops at the crosswalks, but for me, it seems like people try to beat you to it. So when they see you coming and, you know, of course you're pushing a stroller. So you go slowly, like, yeah. you know, intent on coming in to the crosswalk, they'll try to like zip through and beat you through. Um, or yeah, just not even stop at all. And so I just find that the, that they're not as friendly when it comes to that, not as accommodating to pedestrians and people with strollers. Um, so I would say that's a big thing. Ah, oh, Trav, super chat. first super chat. Thank you so much. Thank we we you. don't actually see a comment in your super chat. So let us know who you want that, that fiber to go to. And we've got something special for you. Yeah. So the super chats now, we, we've, we've got something special. Amy kind of whipped something up in her uh, creative kitchen so <laughs> yeah so that's definitely something that we wanted to touch on uh if you're doing a super chat um probably not a super sticker but a super chat say who it's for and and yeah we've got a little little fancy yeah. thing it'll be like you. a super sticker what yeah. pops up mm. so cool so yeah who's that for trav thank you for that um okay moving on um bring in when will you make a i would have said bring lobby? hand bring hand but maybe bring it's in. Bring in. i don't yeah, know sure. huh. Um, when will you make a video about Lagos? Ooh. Lagos is happening this week. We're actually, we, we heard you all. It was, it was almost a dead even race between Lagos and Tavira. And we know that that's such a popular, uh, destination for expats, either Lagos or Tavira down here in Algarve. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Our so part with big beers, but he doesn't say it's just for Josh, hey, right? Where beers. is this coming up? Cheers. Cheers. Because last time on our live, Aardvark, you kept giving beer for Josh, and I was like, where's mine? But okay, so is the last one wine for Kaylee. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Okay, so <laughs> so go, going back to the, the Tavira Lagos thing, uh, we've decided to kind of pit the two against each other and say who we think that the two cities would work really well for. Mm -hmm. Both of them are nice, and, and we're going to give our ratings at the end um, for the places we've been so far. But both are nice and both are very livable. So that video is coming out on Wednesday. Lagos versus Tavira, giving you an idea of what life would be like in both of those. Because like Josh said, it was really close. And I think our patrons actually edged out the Tavira side. Yes. But we heard you guys. Joyce is asking, are you finding lots of English speakers in the Algarve too? I would say yes. However, this is... This is personally for me with a caveat. I'm I'm speaking to people in Portuguese as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sometimes to my detriment, I'm digging, <laughs> digging a hole for myself. But how about you? Are yeah, you I would say uh, a little a little mix, a little mix. <laughs> okay. But I would say that definitely in Lagos and Tavira, um, English was was easy. Uh, a little less in Fado, but the younger people here definitely. And that's how to pronounce it, from what we know, Fado. Mm. So, so it's not faro, no. but faro, like soft R sounds not like a D, soft D. I don't so know. I would say you can get by with, with beginner, maybe some simple Portuguese uh, sentences. Um, you can get but by, but most of the English level is really strong here. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
all across all together, Portugal. Yeah, so same with the Algarve. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, uh, Sampreet Singh, how would you compare the Algarve to Lisbon for raising a young family? This is an awesome question. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you for that. I think one big, big thing you have to consider when we're talking about young families is are the kids school age? And do you want them in an in international school? Because the options for international schools are far less here compared to Lisbon. Uh, I mean, there's a huge concentration in Lisbon itself. So that's the one big question you have to answer in terms of, is there plenty to do with kids and whatnot? I would say for the most part, yes. Tavira is a little more family friendly for, for younger families. Mm -hmm. But if your kids are like kind of spunky and they like outdoor activities, then Lagos could be awesome. Mm -hmm. Fado um, is fine. I mean, obviously there are young families, Portuguese families that live here, but you know, if you have the option to move around and you're not job dependent on a place, then uh, either Lagos or Tavira would be better of the three that we've experienced so far. I found that um, Fado doesn't have parks. <laughs> So that's yeah. not fun, um, you know, with little ones. Wow, super chat for yeah. Kaylee. Woo woo, ah, Nubia Ned. The, uh, the wine glass. I have my ticket and this will help with my trip planning. Treats for Kaylee, woo hoo. Man, that's awesome. So I can go out and get some wine. That's awesome. <laughs> Looks like we got another, another super chat. Super chat. There's another one. Oh, here it is, Eric. Wine for the ladies, beer for the gents, and of oh, course a pastry for Sia. Roll, it's all of them. Okay, all so of them. let's roll just show on. you. Here we have Sia We've with her Sia. pastry. There we go. She's sleeping right now, of course. Josh with his super box. <sighs> Me with my wine. <laughs> and then we have G with his pizza. pizza. He loves, loves the his pizza. pizza. And Amy with her fizzy drinks, sodas, and sumo. Right? Sumo. Sumo yeah. is cool. for this one because it's Portuguese. All right, let's awesome. roll on to the next thank question, you, guys. Thank you, Eric. you all are awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so let's see what's next, guys. Um, there we go. Wolfgang, do you plan to go to Villarreal de Santo Antonio? I know you did a video with another American there. Uh, it's that was Veronica, so right? yeah, Veronica, American expat. Um, um, so she's she's not back yet. I think had had she been there, we probably would have made a trip over there to see her. Um, but she's in the U.S. flying back soon. Uh, hopefully she sees this if she does. What's up, Veronica? Um, yes. So it's a bit far away uh, for us to do a day trip there. So we're going to pass on Villarreal, Santo this Antonio. Time, this yeah. time. <laughs> but hopefully uh, there's others out there that can get you some info about. about I'm going to get right slated now. for my pronunciation on that. I pronounced it very American. Oh. <laughs> Okay, uh, moving on. Ready, go, expat. I know you guys got there by train, but what about Fado Airport? Can you go go to many different cities in Europe? It, yeah. yeah, you can. I mean, EasyJet, as we mentioned in the video, EasyJet has uh, quite a few flights that that go there. It's um, you know, it's a destination that many European people want to come to. Mm -hmm. So because of that, that means if they're flying in from a location, then you can leave Fado and go to their location. So you've got those flights. Um, I would say yeah. for the size of Fado, it's actually a pretty it's a well connected airport, airport. Yeah, yeah, it's a good to airport. other parts of, of Europe. I got to put sure. my hat on. My hair. <laughs> the crazy it's, it's embarrassing. <laughs> it is embarrassing. Okay. Aardvark, I read today that they extended the tourism ban from US till June 27th. Have you heard other info? Interesting that you asked because she I did. and Sonia, I don't know if you're on here. Um, I met with a Portuguese lady today who uh, lives, is, here. lives in Faro, uh, born in Faro. And she was telling me that she had just heard that they're planning to open up in the next week or so um, for Americans. So um, I don't know if they've specifically set the date, if they maybe initially said we're exploring the option and we're looking to open in a week or two, uh, or if they've said, okay, June 27th is a date. But if they've even set that date, then that's good news because that means they've actually said something as opposed to like, oh, we don't know, we don't know, we're waiting, we're waiting, and nothing official has come out. So the fact that it's still in June is a, is a good thing. But she was saying that she had heard that it was going to be in the next week or so. So it might be, it might, well, it I mean, might that's, be that's June two 27th weeks away. is only yeah. two weeks away. Yeah. Um, so it does seem like it's soon. So for those hope, of you guys. who have booked flights for July, I think it's going to happen. I think you'll be able to come in July. Okay. Is Portugal totally open without quarantine for all tourists? That's from John Mayer. Um, 
Yeah, I think so. I think you have think to so. when you when you fly in, you'll have to have a negative COVID test. That's right. And Sonia did say that she was seeing that it's possible that you have to have the vaccine. I don't think that has been officially stated yet. What is required for Americans to come in? Um, Europeans, I believe, they have not done a passport, a, like a vaccine passport yet. They had no. talked about it, but that hasn't happened yet. They couldn't um, get everybody to come together on it. Uh, and and Goblin and Amy G and Amy flew from London and they had to do the PCR test, uh, but that was it. And then quarantine, no. no. Quarantine so they're, so they're not asking you to do quarantine as as tourists. Yeah. I think if you show symptoms or you're exposed, then you need to do quarantine. But just for flying in, you have that negative test. If you have a vaccine, even better. So proof of that, and you should be okay. All right. Next moving one. Moving on. Uh, Ron, will you be visiting areas of the Algarve north of the coastal towns? We're curious about the cost culture as you get farther inland. Uh, in in Algarve? In the Algarve. We are. Uh, we, yeah, we, we yeah. have some stuff planned. We do. Uh -huh. uh, we're probably going to have to, just because there's so much content that we're trying to cover in two weeks, we're probably going to have to shoot some stuff, hold some videos back. Um, but we will go there and we will be able to kind of give our opinion or our take on the places. Mm -hmm. That's sure. kind of what the lives are meant for as well as we're actually, because there's only so yeah, much we can, can put out. Questions. Um, but yes, you can ask questions and we can try to help, you know, in our opinion, give you a bit of the vibe of, of the cities that we're in. Yeah. Um, so we do plan on doing a bit more inland. And then of course we're go going to work our way up Portugal to get even further in inland, but out of the Algarve. So yeah. We are looking for some of that too. Okay, um, Flo Trey, loving your content. Any tips for an American who wants to transition to work abroad, but who is also early career? It's hard. Early in your career. Mm. It's hard. I think. Ooh, that's a tough <laughs> one. So I'm usually the one that answers these type of questions on YouTube when we get them. Honestly, like it's really difficult um, getting really good jobs from abroad here in Portugal and in Europe in general. Um, I would say try to carve out a digital career. If mm -hmm. you're, if you're really looking at, at working here in Portugal, uh, for example, most of the jobs that would be like an expat job or expat package where they bring you over on, on relocation assignment would be in Lisbon and Lisbon is the most expensive city here. So you would probably be living like, month to month or paycheck to paycheck, mm -hmm. uh, most likely, I mean, especially where you're saying early in your career, uh, not being like a high end exec, because if you're a high end exec, you'll, you'll be getting paid. Mm -hmm. And if you're, you know, making a really good wage in Lisbon, you can be living a really, uh, fun, nice life. But, um, yeah. I suppose the only alternative is if you work with a massive uh, international company uh, that has maybe like locations all over the no, place. For sure. If you can get into one of those and then you could possibly transition. work your way up and transition to a different country, but yep. stay within that company. Yes. That is just a little harder because those jobs are in high demand. Well, and, and, and up until up until COVID, we would have said get into the hospitality industry. Mm -hmm. Like that's one of the best ways to move around is mm -hmm. you get in with a hotel and you just try to get you know relocated and work your way up the management chain. Yep, and, but, make, and then you can move around. That's true. That, yeah. That's a good one. But that's tough. So really, right now, remote is the way to go if you're able to. Yep. Okay, um, Brad, are you able to do some real estate options in different parts of Algarve? We wish. <laughs> Actually, it's really funny, and I didn't tell you this, um, but I was speaking with Sonia, the Portuguese lady today, and she was just saying that she asked how that was going, like trying to get into real estate. And I was like, oh, it's really hard. Like we're, we're not really getting anywhere. And she's like, I'm not surprised. So she was explaining that the real estate is quite different here. The agent really just works for the seller. Mm -hmm. So that makes it hard for the buyer. Mm -hmm. um, so even though we would you know, like to show some stuff that would be being sold to give you an idea. They just uh, don't quite get the concept. And apparently, yeah, the company has a license, not the actual real estate agent. So you kind of don't know who you're getting uh, when it comes to the real estate agent. So that's what has made it hard. Some of them are great and work really well for both sides. Some of them, not so much. <laughs> yeah, we have some real estate contacts outside of, of this region. Mm -hmm. So when we get into the other regions, we're just gonna hit them up and hopefully they'll be able to work with us and we'll be able to show you 
four properties, for example. We will show you guys in a later video, we'll show you this place here, uh, what we've paid in rents and yeah, that type of thing. But unfortunately- It's hard. And, it's hard. And there's not much right now too. Um, so even if you take a look at different um, sites for like renting, uh, there's really not that much, which is, which is surprising. No, so. it just, and it, it just gets worse in terms of inventory when we go north of here. <laughs> yeah, we could be, could be sleeping in our rental car. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> not, okay. not with the heat the way it is. Oh, and the baby. Um, Pam, does Portugal require a tourist visa or any immunizations? For uh, Americans, no. I mean, you have you have your, your 90 days, right? You have your 90 day, um, not even, well, it's a visa, right? The Visa yeah. upon arrival. Visa so upon you don't arrival. do anything beforehand. No, so once it opens up. up, so yeah. Once the ban opens up for Americans, then you sh you just hop on a plane and come, and you're allowed to be here for 90 days. Yes, but currently, as of June 13th, the 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 only way that an American can get here, uh, get into Europe uh, in general, is is they they have a legal residence here. Mm -hmm. So if you have the D7 visa, for example, or a D2, one of those types of visas, uh, then you can get in the country. Right, and then immunizations. They still haven't said whether that will be a requirement. EU um, citizens don't seem to need it right now to move around. Yeah. That could change though, because uh, there are talks with needing that, but they haven't officially said what it'll be once they open things up for Americans. But like for us, uh, if we, since we have a residency here, if we were to leave and come back, we would not need our vaccination as of right now to, yep. to come back in. Yep. Good it's, thing, because yeah. we can't get it right now. <laughs> we're still not in the age group yet. Uh, they're at 42, 42 and up are getting their I'm getting vaccines. Close, Josh is getting close. Close. <laughs> okay, John, uh, in the Algarve, where do most Brits and especially Americans retire to or near in the cities? To Vera's, oh, in the Algarve. Oh, in yeah, the Algarve. I was thinking, yeah, okay, in the Algarve. Yeah. Maybe, well, I think Lagos Port and Port de Mal yes. seem to be pretty big. Um, the Brits are really all over down here and mm. a lot will depend on uh, what they want as their lifestyle, I would say. So if they want to be close, like right on the beach, because some of these are coastal, but they're not, they don't have good beaches. Right. So you have to keep that in mind. And when you look at it on a map, they don't necessarily have good beaches that are walkable and easy to get to. Um, so a lot will depend on lifestyle, but I would say the Brits are all over. Um, Americans seem to be going a bit more to Lagos, would you say? Yeah. And I would just say in general, there's not a ton of Americans down mm -hmm. here, uh, but the ones that do arrive, we were having a conversation uh, with, with uh, two viewers that uh, hit us up when we were in Tavira and we talked about this actually. So the expat communities compared to like Porto, for example, um, in Tavira and down in Algarve, they're much tighter. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's because they're fewer. So it's like, you know, few and far between. So few and far between I'm speaking too fast and people like, you know, gather together. Whereas in Porto, we're all over the show. Right. Like we're just not spread out because Porto is small, but like we just stay with our small friend groups. It seems that way anyways. So some I think and Americans COVID. would be maybe a bit more from Tavira and East that we know of in some of these smaller areas. Um, Cause that's nice too, because you can easily get over into Spain. It's not very far. So when you get here, I recommend when you get here, get into a Facebook group or something like that and, uh, and, and find your, your people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause it, you really do have a different lifestyle in each place. Mm -hmm. uh, Ron, given that the Algarve seems to be heavily tourist oriented, are the locals telling you that lots of things close in the off season winter? Okay. So yeah. I'm going to, yeah, yeah, let me jump in. <laughs> okay. I would say this is the unique thing about Fado is that Fado is a city. I mean, it's like a, it's a decent sized city. It's uh, fairly populated, fairly spread out. Definitely like we, we've been walking around a lot of the local side of Fado. Um, and I so would it's say, not going to close. I would say, no, like this. Yeah, exactly. This, the stuff that you're going to want to do for daily life uh, will be open. Now, maybe some shop, uh, shops will close because of low season. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, you're not going to have any issues in Fado. But uh, some of the smaller places that have been built up as resort cities in a way will close in the winter. So what was you, the one near Tavira? Uh, you remember? I'm putting you on the spot. Remember, no, sorry. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, but there, I there know that there some. are a few that are, um, yeah, that are just meant to be for tourists. So the whole city is practically 
touristy, um, which is great during the summer, but they will close down during the winter. And I think Veronica even mentioned that. She gave out some names. That's the one. Yeah. I can't remember the name. Was it me. not the Villa de Santa v Antonio? Villa Mora. No. No. Okay. No, just um, another one that so there be. are places it's like that, but it's not everywhere down here. There are plenty that, because it's more livable for for locals, for Portuguese, then of course they don't close. This question. Oh. Natural makeup and beauty products. What's your favorite city in Portugal? One, two, three, <laughs> Porto. Porto. <laughs> Still, mm -hmm. even after traveling um, and being around a little bit, and obviously we haven't seen everything. And we'll, no, we'll like more, at, but. At, at the end of 90 days or however long this, this journey is, you hit us up ask with that question, again. ask us again, but I think it's going to be Porto. But honestly, when we were in Lisbon uh, not long ago, we had this conversation that we still, both of us, very much so love Porto the most out of everywhere in Portugal. Yeah. Um, but Porto, my people. Yeah. Eric, uh, having been in Portugal for seven months now, what Brilliant surprised question. you the most about the Algarve? Hmm. Brilliant question. Um, I'm going to have to think about that, actually. I'm going to have to put some thought into it. <laughs> I think the, the, the weather has been good here D despite the heat like God. we've yeah well there's been a heat wave too mm -hmm. let's discuss that so over the past couple of days it has been like unseasonably hot for june from what we can tell um and the, the sun intense but we've but had some get hotter too so it's unseasonably hot for june for june yeah, and july, it july and hot. Yeah. it yeah. has put a good shade on us i do like that but, i'm looking a little tanner can you see him tanner but I would say, I would say certainly uh, the weather would be a reason you would want to come down here if you don't like cold weather. Um, and yeah, that would be nice. Although I don't know if surprised, maybe that's not a good surprise. I mean, obviously surprise. we know everyone talks about how you come down to the South because the weather is better. So I don't know if that's mm -hmm. much of a surprise. I think maybe what surprised me the most is the lack of public transportation. Okay. That's a so, good one. When you look at things, you will see that there are buses, mm -hmm. but walking around in some of these different cities, you don't see them regularly rolling through like you would in other cities. Yeah. So that means a car, it depends on your lifestyle. You could live down in the heart of places and just choose to walk and kind of stay in that area and then do like an Uber uh, to go outside of your little area. But it does seem like a car I've is got one. better here. I've got one real quick. Uh, I think that there are a lot of cool day trips that are down here in this region. That's so, good. There's a, yeah, there really is a lot to a see. Lot and cool even when you places. like, when we take the train, you'll just roll into like, like kind of looking like a little sleepy little town. And then you'll go and there's like nothing and it's super rural. And then you hit like something Another that's town. really made up, you know, something much bigger. And it's like, wow, this would be a cool place to check out. Carrie is asking where we are going next. That Good is a great question. question, and we want to know that too. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have the vote. So after this live stream ends, you guys can head over to the community tab. It'll be starting at uh, 10 o'clock our time. So in about 30 minutes, um, we'll open up that poll, and we'll have 48 hours. That poll will close, and then we will frantically run around like, <laughs> trying to to plan our logistics to get from here to there where's there we don't know until you vote so yep that'll be on the community tab and we're we'll just keep it open for 48 hours so that we actually do have a few <laughs> days to to plan, plan. and then uh, we'll be heading there so yeah and then we'll highlight you know that region for you guys mm -hmm. good question though Great it's question. exciting we're excited to find out where you guys vote big time <laughs> uh -huh. so I think we're gonna go for maybe about five more minutes or so yep let's five do more it. minutes um Richard, hey guys, love your content. What are some of the best inland cities in the south of Portugal not interested in living near the ocean? Um, are mean? you are you wondering still in the Algarve? Does it have to be there or even more inland? Because we're going to be heading more inland this next leg of the journey yeah. if you wait for that. Most likely, right, in Alentejo will yeah. be somewhere much more inland. So I'm curious to know if it's for the Algarve and you're kind of still near the coast or if mm. you're interested in getting into more like wine country, because um, that would be Alentejo. Yeah. Uh, and we'll know more about that in the next coming weeks. Um, and then you can hit us up with the same question. A lot of people have been talking, though, in the Algarve about Lole. Yeah, is that Lole. a say? Lole. Yeah, yeah. I asked. Uh, Lole. 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 Lole, I think maybe Lole. because the accent's yeah, on the accent's on the E. Lole, and that seems to be um, a quaint little place that we're going, going we're to check go out there. this yeah. week. 
um, that is more inland. And, you know, Tavira is on a river. It's not super coastal. Right. Um, so you do have that at least. So it's not, doesn't have to necessarily be on the beach if you don't want to be that close. There's some hidden gems in here. Yeah. So good places to check out. Good question though. We're going to take a couple more questions and then I'm going to invite uh, Godwin, G and Amy to get back in here. And we're going to talk about uh, if we would live or which cities we would live in down here. Mm. Okay. Go ahead. Wolfgang, Wolfgang. It's 38 Celsius here in Arizona. Woo. What is the current temp? Is it because of the humidity that feels hot? Well, current temp, it's at night yeah. right now. So it's probably something in the 60s. Um, but Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mid 60s right now. It's the, it's the sun. And, and, and Arizona has like an intense sun as well, I think. Yeah, right? yeah, definitely. And I would say down here, actually, it's drier. Like compared to Porto and for, uh, like further north, where you get more of the humidity and that type of heat and the dampness that happens, especially in homes. Yeah. You still get that down here. But it is that kind of drier, more intense heat that you feel from the sun. When We've you all had chapped around. lips. <laughs> yeah, I've been the lotion lips. on a lot. Yeah. Um, so when with the heat wave came, it got into the 80s. And um, there was at least a, a light breeze. Apparently in the Alentejo area, you have a breeze, but it's like a hot breeze. Like a, we'll, a, let, we'll let you know. Yeah. We're like going a, there at the wrong time. <laughs> We're trying to get in there before it gets too hot, I guess. Um, but yeah, so so that was the heat wave was more like in the 80s, but it's still warm, but in the 70s, high 70s, I guess, uh, during the day here okay. would be the norm in June, right? Yep. But it's just get hotter. All right, let's grab one more if we can, and then we will bring in G and Amy and, and do a little would you expat that. Uh, John, what is the range of dates for the tourist season roughly? June through August, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, roughly it would be about shot. June through August. August is with the time that the Portuguese have their big vacation. So um, that is when the Algarve is overloaded with people will be in August time. Yep. But June through August is when it all starts pretty much. Yep. All, all right. right. Let's slide this back. Have these guys yeah, come give in. Me in. Give me a <laughs> get, get in tight. Okay. So we're going to play a little, little game, if you will, called Would You Expat That? And uh, if you guys want to hashtag this out, if you want to actually live in that place, you say, I'd expat that. So you'd hashtag that out. Um, okay. Let's start with where we are now. We've been a week in Fado. Mm -hmm. You guys have kind of gotten a good sense of it. We've walked and filmed everywhere. Yep. yep. So uh, Fado, would you expat that? Oh, me first. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to say, yeah, I would expat yeah. that. You'd yeah, expat I mean, that. yeah, I'm going to say so. Yeah. That's wonderful. It really is. Like, there's just so many hidden gems out there, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you really just wanted to, like, find a nice little place that you want to get coffee or something like that, you don't have to queue up for places to just mm -hmm. get in and stuff. So it's really hidden gems around here. So, yeah, I would, definitely. Okay, I'll pass. <laughs> I would not expect that. <laughs> oh, I thought you were just passing on the question. <laughs> um, I would not expect me no. no. <laughs> Gee, you're living alone. <laughs> I'm living by himself. Oh, fair dude. All right, so let's go with. Let's go with. Let's go with Tavira. Let's go with Tavira. Tavira. So, Kaylee. Oh, you, you want me to start? That? Yeah. I would expect Tavira. Uh, it's very family friendly and just smaller, quieter. The one caveat I would have about it is because it's small and quaint and charming, it might get a little boring. So, yeah. um, I would expect that. For maybe like a few months out of the year or something. Maybe in the winter. I said that in the winter. <laughs> she's she's going to be a snowbird. But yeah. Or a sleep bird from uh, Porto. But it is family friendly and I really like that about Tavira. So I think I would expat that with the same mindset that Kaylee has uh, and just say that there's a possibility that it gets boring. It would be cool to have a car, although I don't want a car, but it would be cool to have a car down there because you can just explore the region from there and the people are really nice. Um, and it, it's very quaint, like we said, and then also you can cross the border pretty easily. Into Spain, and that, yeah. That like in nice. uh, Andalusia, that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, G. Um, I always say I would like to stay in the Faro. Oh, oh, you're staying in the Faro? Yeah, 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 I'm fine, bro. Yeah, that's my number one. Wow, wow. Okay. My okay. guy, <laughs> my guy is staying here. <laughs> we will see you later. <laughs> would you expect Tavira? No, no. Okay, no. Why not, why not? Um, too quiet for me. 
Yeah, and nice, like, yeah, really nice little place, but uh, too quiet. Mm. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so the last place that we've been so far is Lagos. Lagos, I, I'm not a huge beach person. Um, I'm going to pass. Mm. I, okay. I could if I had to. I could if I had to. It's a nice place, but I, I wouldn't choose to live there, per se. Me? I'm yeah. ex I'd expat Lagos. I thought the vibe, I really liked the beachy, the beachy, <laughs> the beachy <laughs> vibe um, of Lagos. There were a lot more people, but I like the beach. Um, and so I think it, I think I would expat that. Hmm. G's still in Fado, so. G's still stuck in Fado. <laughs> and, and then let's see if, uh, if Amy's homeless. So, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely would. Would you I definitely would? would. Why? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Love it. I thought it was beautiful. Loads mm. to do. Like just my vibe. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Definitely, hundred percent. There is a lot of outdoorsy water sports mm. and stuff to do. It, it looks something. super fun. Yeah, that you'd like to do. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let me let you guys know something uh, really cool that we have going on at the end of all this. We're going to go to each region, continental Portugal, and we. Uh, hope that you all will send us to one of the two islands or both of them, Madeira or Azores. And the way we're going to do that is if we hit some goals. So we have a YouTube subscriber goal. If you're not subscribed and you're watching this, please hit the subscribe button and subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell so that you can get updates when we go live like this and all of our video for, for the next 90 days roughly. And then we have a patron goal. If we get to 150 patrons, we're on 70 right now. Uh, sorry, we're on 80 right now. We have 70 to go. We have 70 to go. Uh, then our patrons get to choose where we go and where we film and everything. So if you guys could do one of those two things to help us get to the islands, that would be brilliant. Uh, that's all we have for this week. We'll see you guys in two weeks live, but we'll have videos coming out. We've got four videos lined up in the next two weeks. So get ready. Make sure that you vote on the community tab. Yep, Send yep. us <laughs> to the next place. All right, Bye. let's get moving. Bye. 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 <laughs>